Hi, um, am I audible? Can you hear me well? All right, hopefully so. Um, hi, everyone. So, <laughs> sorry for a little delay. I got just a cool discussion in the canteen about the <laughs> philosophical aspects of blockchains, and yeah, totally lost in time. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be starting with an introduction. My name is Boris, and uh, uh, I'm one of the contributors to Sora Blockchain. Uh, I'm also a software engineer by training, and uh, yeah, uh, the goal of this presentation is to immerse to you, you to the um, Sora ecosystem. And well, first of all, thanks a lot for the organizers for making this talk possible. It is really great to be talking here, even with a small delay, but <laughs> anyways. Um, a little bit about content. Uh, content. So um, I'm going to be starting with the history of uh, Sora blockchain, like what is it? Why was it made that way? What are the most uh, fundamental principles that were um, designed within the first version of Zora? And I'm also going to be um, talking about its current state as well as the future plans. So, back then when we were coming up with the uh, initial design of Sora, we have always kept in mind that we want potentially to be uh, applicable on the macroeconomic level and like could be used as a legal tender. And back then, uh, a lot of cryptocurrency projects um, didn't really um, didn't really have this like macroeconomic application and were usually viewed as a payment system or uh, like uh, an object for different use cases such as DeFi or anything else. Um, and what we wanted to do from day one is to make it applicable on the macroeconomic level so it can potentially be a legal tender starting from like small regions or small countries and can then can potentially grow. So um, and uh, we can take Bitcoin as a example, something with the deflationary model, once the all the blocks are produced, like everybody would want to huddle and that can potentially lead to the um, like low liquidity and like any other issues. And uh, uh, that way we became the <laughs> um, inflationary model uh, advocates and uh, uh, needed to come up with some mechanism that will um, ensure a good inflation model. So, um, and we always kept in mind that if we really want a crypto, cryptocurrency project to be applicable on the uh, con country level or like being seen as a legal tender, uh, not only we have to think about money, but we also have to think about ways to allocate the money. So money supply. Uh, and uh, this, this is a categorization prepared by us, and uh, uh, it is reflecting the different projects' application for these categories. And we've uh, we had a lot of questions, like for um, alternative projects, like that time, oops, uh, that didn't really like match the criteria that we've seen to like be being used as a legal tender potentially. So we had to fill the gaps, basically, covering financial system to monetary policy and et cetera. Uh, so that is what we're trying to put in Sora. And uh, uh, we've really just like took, to, uh, took, took a look to the uh, old uh, uh, economical theories and uh, um, made uh, and put the, to the f core of Sora uh, a uh, general theory of macroeconomics that states that the price of goods and services is proportional to supply. So um, left part is proportional to the right part, basically, as you can see from, from these slides. But um, of course, we can't just be, you know, um, simply printing money on the inter interval based cadence or like anything else. There should be a like rational to print the money. And uh, according to the same theory, um, there are three ways to print money, three means to print money for consumption, for speculation, and production. And the same theory claims that only that, that the printing of money only for the production purposes can potentially lead to the growth. Otherwise, it's just going to be about the price inflation. 
And uh, in order to come up to a, in, in, in order to like prove to someone that your project is like truly a, of the fur type and will probably so probably like affect the um, the quality of the blockchain and like bring the common good, you have to convince the uh, governance to print money for you so that you can execute, so that you can bring uh, more value. And uh, that's where our governance come. So basically, if you want to start a project in Sora, uh, you should, again, just introduce your project. You should make a proposal. You should convince the governments that it will be of a common good. And then you have to pass the governance. Uh, we've based the governments on the f uh, Athens, uh, like principles, where isonomy is agori assertion. Basically, the first one, isonomy is about the political equality. Uh, Isagoria states that everybody can vote, can speak, can contribute, and the assertion is that we randomly pick the groups who are making the votes. Uh, keeping everything in mind and implementing Sora on this. Uh, relatively traditional theory, we came up with Sora V1, which was based on uh, Hyperledger uh, Aroha blockchain. And it was launched in 2017, but uh, unfortunately, it faced some problems with liquidity. So we um, really had to look um, to a model that will give a guarantee that there will be enough liquidity and ensure the deterministic price. And uh, as I said before, uh, it could have been done via the, uh, some automated um, algorithmic uh, elastic supply mechanism. So that's where Sora V2 came up. After several years, we have uh, completely re-architectured um, our blockchain. We've migrated from uh, Aroha to Purity Substrate, and we were utilizing the best features out of the box. And uh, the second most important, uh, most important feature intro introduced is a token bonding curve. The TBC is just an elastic supply function, which is basically, um, yeah, mince and burn our native token. That way, like having a predictable function of buy price and sell price, and that way making the guarantees for the blockchain and for the price. And this is done, of course, like also for the reasons to uh, mitigate the risk of like pumps and dumps. So uh, token bonding curve was was there, and uh, with uh, all of this, we've managed to fill those categories that we've previously highlighted. And you can see token bonding curve is like in charge of the monetary policy, uh, also for forex, and we got the governance that is also like closely connected to uh, same token bonding curve and same different aspects of blockchains so what where are we now all right i'm going to be going to be going to be switching from the economical topics to something more hypey let's say <laughs> uh, so uh, we already got like 7 million transactions or in the nature of substrate extrinsics executed as for now we also got 11 million blocks finalized and now I'm going to be moving to the interactive part. <laughs> Not really interactive, but uh, as I said, the, um, in order to contribute to Sora, in order to get compensated for your projects to be running on Sora, you would have to like pass the, you would have to make a proposal for your project. If you convince the governance that it will be of a public good, then new money will be printed, you need, uh, and then you can basically start building. And now I'm going to be like giving examples of the projects that um, are already implemented on Sora, and uh, most of them are dApps. But anyway, let's go through them. So the first one is PolkaSwap. Uh, PolkaSwap is AMM uh, DEX. Not only you can utilize the pool XYKs, but also you can use the same TBC or completely decentralized implementation of the order books. So uh, order books are are starting running on testnet this week. So yeah, you can be uh, the first people who test it. Uh, also, we got Sora Card. Sora Card is a self-custodial DeFi wallet. 
it's a it's basically a gateway from uh, fiat world to crypto world and it's uh, it's totally private so the decentralized part doesn't know anything about your uh, centralized activity for instance your uh, I don't know uh, transactions associated with certain IBAN and etc and the centralized part in turn doesn't know about your decentralized activity so uh, Sora card and yeah and most importantly of course it's self custodial so you will always be you'll always have a full custody on on your digital assets uh, that, that's a uh, that's a simple eco ecosystem schema and yeah would also would like to touch upon the uh, interoperability features that we're bringing that we're also going through the uh, for, for the proposals so obviously it is useful for us to utilize the benefits from the ecosystem and we've created a substrate bridge we've allocated the slots in Polkadot and Kusama so that the liquidity um, so that we can like in introduce like more, more um, users from the ecosystem and yeah we're obviously utilizing the out of the box like toolkit in the form of uh, XCMP and the RTMP protocols with XCM uh, we also are having the bridge to Ethereum. We'll be releasing very soon the bridges, the trustless bridges to different EVM chains with different consensus system. So again, it's more liquidity. Oops, a little bit early. Uh, then we also got the synthetic platforms and uh, we've built it on top of the Oracle data. Uh, finally, we got the digitals. You can buy a sparkling wine with our native token. The project is called Noir, so <laughs> be sure to check it out. Um, and that's about it. Thank you for the presentation. I'm anticipating some questions. There are any. Thanks. Um, hello. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, why was it chosen to start on uh, the, the Sura V2 network as a separate uh, chain instead of uh, running it as a parachain? Um, well, being parachain implies like having a shared tokenomic system and uh, especially the validation is like partly done by the relay chain and we wanted to have our own like validator and tokenomic system and we have a dedicated like token for rewards that is called val so we just wanted to have a our own like validation economy that's the short answer okay thank you thank you